If you're interested in writing stored procedures or using variables in your scripts to drive your queries, then you're going to want to watch this video. Hi, I'm Chris from Essential SQL, and today we're going to look at how we can use variables in our queries, and then I'm going to ultimately take a query that we put together and then transform it into a stored procedure. So let's get started. So what I'm going to do here is open up query tool. I'm going to use Azure Data Studio and I'm going to do a really simple select. So I'm going to do a select um, from the person table in AdventureWorks database. We'll do select star from person dot person where the last name is like RAL. I got some typos to fix here. All right. So when it runs, you'll see that we get some rows back. And what we did here is we did a pattern match on the last name being RAL. So what I want to do next is declare a variable to do the same exact thing. So what, but using a variable. So what I'm going to do here is declare a variable for the last name pattern we'll make that a ver care we'll make it 20 and then we will set it we're going to equal to for now R A L which is what we just ran for our query all right and now here's the cool thing is I could take this variable and I can plop this right into my query, right? And what's going to happen now is when I run my query, last name pattern is going to get set to RAL. And then when we run the query, it will use that value in the query itself. So let's run this. And you can see it comes back with RAL. So if I was to change this to like a K here and run it, you see it comes back with a person's name that starts with KAL. So now our query doesn't need the change, right? I can just change the variable and make this happen. So you might be asking, well, that's cool, and I guess you can use this for a script, and you can, just like this. But what's even better yet is you can make a stored procedure and then pass parameters in and do the same thing and make it into a stored procedure, and then we can just call it. So what I'm going to do is do a create procedure, okay? And I'm going to call my procedure person search last name. And we will bring in as a parameter our name pattern. Okay. So I no longer need a name pattern here. In fact, I no longer need to set it. And then I'm going to say as and then begin. So I'm just defining my standard procedure here and now I will add my query which is right here I'm just going to out down it a bit and down it I suppose and then end it so what I now have is a definition for a procedure it's called person search last name it has a parameter called last name pattern that we're going to accept accept and then we will run the query based off that so let me run this command and it just created the procedure in our database now to execute it I could go like X and then person search last names right here and then I can give it a name pattern so let's do R A L percent okay and I can highlight this and then just run this piece and you can see it comes back with the names for RAL. There it is, last name RAL. So we could even do cool things like let's do percent um, ERT. Let's see if there's anybody that has like ERT in the middle of their name. And run this. And you'll see here where it's coming back with people like Walker, Roberts. So ERT is in the middle. I have a pattern. So you can see now that I can use this one stored procedure and then just pass in many different types of patterns to it to find names back.
So now you can see how you can evolve your query into this type of um, pattern. So what we first did, remember, is we took a simple select statement like so, right? And then we evolved it into a select statement with a query, which looked like this, right? And then we evolved that into a stored procedure. Okay, it's kind of yelling at my stored procedure because it's kind of just hanging here. But you should now see how this thing evolved. I hope this uh, helps you out. And leave some comments, like my video, and subscribe to the channel. And I appreciate it. Take care.